All right. Coach Green. What's uh, happening? A lesson. Lesson. <laughs> so, I, uh, I had a, a, an untimely accident literally the last time you and I talked on, on camera. Yeah. Uh, my two-year-old son, Thomas, became a uh, computer repairman. Okay. That's he, good. He took care of business. Thinking it of some career, career it early on. Good. It wasn't good. So it was crazy because I, uh, I did the podcast with you out in the back on the deck. We just had sanded and painted today, so I can't go on it. So yeah. I set it in on the footstool where it's been, where I've done it hundreds of times. And I came in, went out, and, and what happens is on Zoom, it's got to download the video from this video that's yeah. recording right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's crazy. And I came in, and it was, when I left, it was open. When I came in, it was open on the footstool. And when I came back, it was closed laying on the floor. And I opened it up. And the screen was all spidered and shattered. Oh, boy. At which point, for 36 hours, I was like a piece of garbage dad. I was so mad. <laughs> Dude, I was like, I, I haven't been this mad in 10 years. Inconsolable. I, I was inconsolable. I was like, and you were texting me like, hey, what's going on? And I was like, <laughs> uh, I couldn't like, I couldn't even effectively communicate to you and like articulate how <laughs> bad it was. I was so mad because you got to understand all this stuff I've done cor during quarantine sure is on the computer and I, and I yeah. did have some of it backed up there was personal stuff from hikes we were doing and but I was right. out of my mind so to par to, to, to parlay onto that I finally got uh, an appointment and public service amount announcement Scott Green if you have Mac products do you have an iPhone you have an iPhone right I do indeed yes or if you have a MacBook Pro, whatever it is, iPad, so you, you, you are included in this, you cannot now just roll up to a store and, like, walk in. You can't go to a Mac, an Apple store and just walk mm -hmm. in and gallivant in. It does not work like that. You yeah. have to use this app on your phone. It is called, geez, it is called Apple Support. Get okay. the Apple Support app, and you have to schedule an appointment on the Apple support app. So I went to one in North Akron Fairlawn and they were like, did you, did you, did you, did you have an appointment? And I'm like, well, no, there were hundreds of people lined up at the door and they were handing you a mask, doing your temperature. Long story short, I couldn't get into that one. The earliest I could get into that one was in eight days. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that didn't do me any good right now. So eventually I used the Apple support thing and I was able to nav navigate it. And I got into a one 20 minutes away in Eaton park. And so I get in there and it was, once again, you show up, there's two lines. There's the scheduled appointment line and then there's the walk-up line, right? It's two like lines. Going to, the, going to the DMV, man. There you go. Guess what had a line and guess what didn't have a line? Yeah. There were, I stood in line with people who had appointments for 25 minutes. It was like a 95 degree day with a mask uh -huh. on. Guess who was able to walk up and walk right in? All the people with no appointments. No appointments, yeah. Of course, right? So I get in there, and I'm at this table with these two really old people with, like, uh, uh, I couldn't make their accent. Well, I figured, well, eventually they told me they had Polish accents. Okay. Right? The guy that was helping the Apple Genius had full sleeve tattoos. Mm -hmm. so the lady was like, did those tattoos hurt? Right, in her, like, broken English deal. And, he's, and the guy was, like, super nice. He was so professional. He was like, oh, no, you know, some of them did. And her husband's like, I got a really cool tattoo. And he holds his arm up. And it's this faded – it's about this – it's these faded numbers. And he's like, I got a oh, tattoo. No. Oh, no. And, he, and uh, so, yeah, when he was 10 years old, the Nazis invaded. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that was he coming, man. He was in camps from – November or October of 1939, and he was at Auschwitz in 1945 when they liberated it. Six years, man. Yeah. Dude, my mind was blown. And all this dude wanted was he just wanted he just wanted. They were asking the guy all their passwords. None of it for Apple stuff. Uh -huh. Hey, I don't know my Facebook password. I don't know my Google password. Actually, one of them locked themselves out of their phones, and he was able to get that for him. All this guy cared about. And they kept taking their masks off. And he was like, yep. sir, ma'am, you 
can you please put your mask back on? And all I'm thinking to myself, and I verbalized it finally, I'm like, first off, to the guy, I was nice to the guy. I was like, that guy's tougher than a $2 steak. I'm yeah. like, if the Nazis couldn't kill this guy in five-plus years of extermination, and, and, and he was in Auschwitz for multiple years, I'm guessing he doesn't care too much about the mask. Yeah, he's going to figure it out, man. He's going to survive. <laughs> yeah, I was like, but dude, it was crazy. They actually yeah. brought out another monitor and let me do everything on my computer and just let me set up shop at the Apple store. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I was communicating with – I actually uploaded the – that was how I got the file off and was able, before I sent the thing away to Apple, before they sent it to Apple, I was able to upload it right from the Apple store. They're going to have you start seeing customers pretty soon. Sure, sure. Little, little guys like – Dude, how about the dude when he when he showed the like faded numbers wow. on his arm? It, like I my I was like, see, I didn't know what see, to say. So, so you got to reframe that a little bit. You got to be, be be thanking the thanking Thomas for that opportunity to go and meet that guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I do. What I'm saying, um, like that, that's the way the world works. I say, hey man, thanks man. Like if if you hadn't have gone, you know, whack them all on my computer, uh, then. I'm not meeting this. I'm not meeting this Polish dude who survived six years in the camps, man. So I, look at it mind. that way. Yeah, he Frame got it. liberated in January of 1945. He was he was 16. Wow. So and, and and okay. So then I was like, they left, and then I just started talking to the genius. I was like, imagine the things that that man saw. Yeah. Imagine yeah. what that guy saw. I'm like. This is nothing. What we're doing now is nothing. This is nothing yeah. compared to that. that guy. You put 50,000 years of trauma and the 50,000 years of other human lives to what that guy saw in five years. It's amazing what resilience people have. You yeah. Know, when it they blows my mind. Make, when they have to. Speaking of resilience, maybe, maybe a segue into the transfer portal. Transfer portal yes. Yeah, like, uh, wow, man, like stuff coming out of there this week, but just the whole concept of how the having the transfer portal has changed college wrestling, you know, um, the way that it's the way that it's covered, the way that Everything. coaches are looking at kids, like it's, it's a, a significant development in having that type of transparency, um, in, in the transfer process. It's, it's pretty yeah. crazy to, it, it, to see what it's done in a very short period of time. Yeah. And obviously I, I, I can't compare it to the Holocaust. I, I, I mean, but, sure. no, but, no, no. but what, what a, what a, like two mind blowing things to me. One, obviously for, you know, change, changing reasons, but another thing they're they're both societal changes. If you want to look at it that way, right. Look at how yeah, kids yeah. are today. They didn't have the portal 25 years ago. Right. It was, no. we're going to hold a year from you. Yep. Not going to give you a free, uh, all free, fair release. Right. Yeah. And, and um, you know, and I, the big one, obviously, Seabass, man, you know, within yeah. the conference, right? Within the, yep. the Big Ten. And is, is his, a, I, Scott, you know, I don't know this, but is he a graduate transfer? He is. Yeah. Um, from everything that I've read, I don't have any personal knowledge of the situation, but, but he is a, a grad transfer. So he's getting his diploma from from northwestern and he's he's headed back home and he's gonna gonna wrestle for for coach goodell down down in jersey right and that's another thing that's not new but but becoming more common an athlete that wrestled for me chris weiler he get his degree from lehigh and he's gonna head out to to wisconsin so you know that's obviously a very different dynamic in terms of transferring than the kid who's maybe unhappy after a year at a place and he's going to go somewhere else. But man, like how do you fault a kid for wanting to move on after he gets his degree? If his, his course of study is, is more appealing somewhere else or, or, you know, he wants to, to, to be in a different area. It's, it's definitely college wrestling is a lot different than it was 25 years ago. Like you said, um, in terms of roster security for coaches, um, you know, the, the, the ability to transfer, the ability, the power has really kind of swung into the hands of the student athletes um, a lot more than maybe it ever has been. And the wild thing about that, you know, is I just look at Northwestern and I just, I do not know how they are competitive in the Big Ten. What Storniola has done, what Pariano did, you know, yeah. what Tim was able to do. I, I don't know how, they have a 22-man roster. Did you know that? 
Yeah, I do. Yeah, they have a roster cap. Yeah, that um, is, roster caps are crazy too. That's another thing that we could do a whole show on. Is right? How do you feel, do you feel the team? Dennis Papadatos down at Hostra had a roster cap too. You know, and how do you feel the team at a, a fifty-six thousand dollar institution with a roster cap? You know, like how do you not run into injuries and red shirts and forfeits and keep putting a team out on the mat every year? Let alone be as competitive as as those schools have been. So. It, yeah. It's crazy, too, because uh, the opposite model for D2 and D3 is they're roster, they're roster driven. They want to bring in as many paying athletes as they can. Yeah. D3 yeah. rosters have like 55, 60 guys. Notre Dame College over here has got 50 guys on the roster. Yeah. Right? Sometimes yeah. 60 guys to start the season. And that's the game where – and I know Breeze has to do it at Lake Erie College. Yeah. He show that – yeah, and I never knew this, right? Mm -hmm. They have to show that they're bringing in more people that are paying than what they're giving out in scholarship. If you didn't know that, that's not that dissimilar from like Wyoming Seminary or a prep school like ours, right? Like roster security, you know, enrollment security. You you have kids that that want to come here. You can strongly make the case that you know, the, the acceleration of us getting a girls program is due to that, that enrollment security of having a niche that girls will want to attend a, a school for, you know, and, and we're seeing that in the college ranks too. Maybe even moving a little, we're moving fast with girls as, as everyone's adding programs because they want that, that ability to interact kids in, and to enroll in their school. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely the lower levels of, of, of wrestling, are growing because of the the prospect of kids being interested in their their schools because of wrestling. Uh, Scott, are you guys to board? It's more than fifty, right? And to, to yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like forty something, right? Yeah, fifty six, fifty seven. Yeah, and then to, to commute is forty something. No, no, no. We're low for that. We're we're like twenty six, twenty seven. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah wow. Per day. Yep. How mm -hmm. many do you board um, on campus? About 180, between 180 and 190. Okay. And we're about 60, 40 data boarding. What, what is, which, which is more? Uh, day. Day is more. Yeah. Day is 60. So you're, you're boarding 180 kids on campus. So that means that your full enrollment's 500 then? A little bit less, but right around there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. With Blair 500 ish again. Yeah, it? but they're, they're heavily tipped towards the, the boarding. They're probably 90% boarding. Um, okay. And they're just, just different campuses, but yeah. Got it. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah. how far apart are you guys, by the way? Hour, hour and 10 minutes. Oh, man. I, yeah. I got to get over for no. that duel, man. Oof, man. You, uh, yeah. I mean, you talk to anybody that's been at it. Um, I toured a family this morning that's, that's looking at coming to Sam and they were like, they're a Jersey family. And they were like, man, we went to your duel last week or last year at Blair. They're like, that was the most intense sporting event I've ever been to in my life. And I was like, well, we're glad you're visiting here because it's, it's just as good when it's here too. And you guys are directly in competition for recruits. It's just like Army and Navy. Yeah. They're in direct competition for the same kids. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, there are kids that are, are not, not going to visit both places, but there are definitely kids who, who are saying, man, I got to pick a, a boarding school option and I want to want to wrestle at a high level. I'm going to look at both. So that's a good thing. How I many mean, of you, you, Scott, how many of you had do you and Blair? I know Mason Manville is the one that comes to mind to me. How yeah. many of you had um, do eat? Is, is, there, is there a significant number? Is, is he the no, only one? No, no. Um, we had a, a kid named JT Carell who, who saw the mat a lot at Michigan this year. Um, he did his entire undergrad at, at Blair and he did a postgraduate year with us. Um, so he was another one who just was looking for better college options, came, wrestled for us as a postgrad, developed a lot in our room, and then wound up going on to, to, to Michigan. So Okay. Yep. So you, you, it is more – it's not super prevalent, but it has happened yeah. another time. A couple times, yeah. Yep. So, Okay. So that would be the big thing. Like we're bringing, you know, I want to talk transfer portal. Portal. I know you do as well. It, yeah. It, yep. It's a huge societal change with the transfer yep. portal. It's more. It's a lot of unpacking to do, Scott, and to really analyze, yep. to look at what the transfer portal is and how it has put the power into the student athletes and taken it yep. from the, the the even the athletic directors and the coaches and and, and administration. Correct. 
Yeah. Um, the, the rules have evolved, but I think the, the ability to, 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 to just submit yourself into that portal, um, it's, it's probably eliminated some, still have to have them at some point along the line, but it's eliminated some of those, those awkward conversations that, that kids have been forced to kind of have in the past. And, you know, maybe having that, that, that transfer portal is kind of that societal thing, right? Like, like I always tell kids, one of my biggest things with them when they're picking a school is if a school is recruiting you, you do not text them and tell them that you're not coming, you call them and you have to have that, that conversation, you know, and that gets harder and harder to do with kids every year because they're so native to the to digital world that they're like, I've been texting this coach all along. Why would I call him before I announce that I'm going somewhere else? I'm, I'm just going to text him. And I'm like, no, that's not how the world works. We're trying to prepare you to, you know, when you make this adult decision to, 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 to make that phone call um, and tell the coach he's, he's invested a lot of time in recruiting you. Um, you give him a call and you say, hey, you know, I really appreciate everything that you did. Um, for me, but but I'm not going to go to your school. I'm going here, and I wanted to let you know before it broke on the internet, right? Um, transfer portal is kind of the same thing, right? Is that you know all of a sudden you're in there, and and and, and it's it's not going through those kind of same steps that that we're used to of getting that information out there, and you know uh, it's it's interesting development for sure. The other wild thing is, you know, it's easy for me to just say this. It's just so cliche. Sign of the times, right? Sign of the times, Mm -hmm. right? Very much so is a sign of the times, you know, whether you want to believe it or not. But, I mean, you know, kids, I don't think kids are different. That's just, I think that parents are a lot different. That's just my opinion. I think kids are resilient, right? I still think they're gritty and tough to a large degree, many of them. You know, I think they're glue. I think that a lot of things stick to them that they hear. I think they're rubber. They can bounce back, right? I mean, there's just – there's. I don't think kids have changed. I think parenting's changed. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I would agree. Um, There's there's a quote that talks about that, and and you see it posted from time to time about how kids are – are brutal and they're savages, and and I don't remember the exact words on it, but – you're kind of led into saying like, yes, that's true. And then the poster like says later, that's a quote from like Aristotle or something like that. Right. Like this is something that the older generation has been saying about kids um, for, for years, for centuries, for since, since kids have been around. Right. Um, So sure. Parenting is different. um, But I also think um, this social media has, has changed things a little bit too um, in, in terms of, all the things that we're talking about, right? Um, like the, the the conversations that are being avoided, uh, the the information that you're seeing, the the way that the sport is being covered, the way that you know kids are are being looked at. Uh, I'm thankful every day uh, of my life that there were not cell phone cameras when I was a teenager. We all uh, said that. We all said know? that, right? Uh, so, um, or when I was in college, and so there's some, some negatives to that too, right? Like if you make a mistake in, in high school now on the mat and you do something stupid, your coach handled it. If it was a big thing, the, 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 the principal got involved, the athletic director got involved, maybe even to the point of where your local cops got involved, but you didn't, it didn't kill you. It didn't kill your career. You weren't over, you know, you weren't canceled. <laughs> oh, now, don't get, you're going to get, you're going to get uh, out of that. I, I won't, but, uh, but now, you know, a kid does something stupid in a high school match and a million people see it within five to seven days, right? Yep. So yep. That's, that's changed too. And kids are kids still, right? So they do things that, that we hate um, and they do things that, that we really don't want to see them do. But their brains aren't fully developed yet and they're going to make mistakes. And now those mistakes are recorded and they are kind of, I mean, let's be honest, they're spread around the internet now. So adults can kind of look at them and say, Oh, what a terrible kid, you know, or, or, or something like that. There are people who make a living and, and who really enjoy seeing moments like that, that broadcast everywhere. And, and, and that's another thing that kids have to deal with as they're trying to navigate the world nowadays. So some, some, some cases, 
power has swung their way and they have a lot more of it. But in some cases, it's it's a more difficult world that they're trying to to negotiate and navigate through. You know, if you look at the uh, the Kennedy Monday, you know his yeah. how he came out. I want to see he uh-huh. came out Monday. Hey, I got I'm in the the portal. Yeah. And then you know yesterday it's I'm staying I'm I'm Carolina I'm Tar Heel strong or whatever yeah. he, he remains. That's the first case where I've seen that where the person's come out, set him in yeah. the portal, mm-hmm. and then gone back and been like, no, I'm I'm gonna stay. And that was just a unique one. I I was trying to just kind of wrap my brain around it, and um, you know, I just got a ton of respect for his dad, obviously. Yeah. And I think that um. And once again, that was that one where I'm like, you know, Kenny Monday did an interview with me at the ACC this year. Did Kenny yeah. Monday have to do an interview with me at the ACC this year? Right. No, you know me nothing, right? So, like, my thing is, like, having access to that guy, but also seeing that he got upset that there were people starting to question, you know, hey, right? Yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't blame him for that. I don't blame his dad for, for being like that. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, are, are we – are we big wrestling media? Are we, are we, you know, if you did that and if a, one of the better guys, better quarterbacks or better safeties or whatever did that from UNC, it'd be yeah. all over the sports center, right? Go one step further and, and put it on one of their basketball players, right? Like Roy Williams isn't going to come on and be like, you don't need to know this. Right. And, and it's a different dynamic because yeah. it's his kid, you know, so we're going to, going to give him some, some latitude because it's his own, own child. Right. But yeah. Um, you know, my take on that is if there's no transfer portal, I have no idea what happens. I have no prior knowledge or inside information or anything like that. But for me, if there's no transfer portal, that probably doesn't happen. Right? No, no, if not a thing. It's not a probably thing. Probably a conversation and it's probably, hey, I'm thinking about this. And it's probably, hey, let's sit down and talk about it. And, you know, then the four days go by and it gets resolved, whatever it was that, that precipitated it. But with the transfer portal, would you just go back and you're like, Hey, I got this computer here. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I'm thinking about doing this, I'm going to put it in there. Um, and I'm going to broadcast it. And, and, and it's just a different, different world, right? Like if, if there's no transfer portal, in my opinion, that, that never happens. Um, so that's another thing that's going to be, uh, an issue that coaches are going to have to be worried about, right? Like what if you, and, and again, I don't have any knowledge of this, but. No, you, neither do I. I'm not, I'm, I'm outside. Get on, if you're a D one coach right now and you get on a kid at practice, are you going to go home and, and, and try to have dinner with your wife and, and get 20 texts that a kid that you just yelled at at practice is in the transfer portal now, you know, like, like is, is, is that a good thing? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's a rough spot to be in. Yeah. with the kid's ability to to control that so yeah and I think I that yeah my thing with it is what are we teaching when they can just jump in the transfer portal all the time yeah mm-hmm. yeah but sometimes you gotta like in a marriage you just can't you shouldn't be getting divorced you shouldn't just right. dash, yeah. you trade her in I'm gonna go get a new one I mean yeah you can't just throw relationships away right yeah and That's that gives you the, the ability to do that you know without having the tough and again not specific to the monday situation because we don't know what happened yeah, we but don't, we, I, gonna, I have no idea right like i'm, I'm not gonna other off camera with you and tell you that i know i don't know yeah. anything about it. yeah here yeah no but but there's gonna be other times when situations happen where a kid does something like that because they're they're angry or they're disgruntled and and those as much as i tell a kid call the coach instead of texting him when you make your decision, some kids aren't going to do that. And as much as we try to teach the kids, hey, something's going on, go and have a conversation with the coach, sleep on it for 24 hours. Um, You know, the digital world, um, social media, all that stuff, it gives the kids free reign to be super impulsive. And what we saw over the last few days here is is a consequence of that that impulsivity um, or for whatever reason. Uh, You know, and here's what I'm going to say about the graduate transfers. I, I'm all right with the graduate transfer, man. I'm, I'm a, I believe that those guys should, they, they have what Sebastian did, yeah. what, uh, you know, what, what Seabass, what we think he's doing. I, we don't know for a fact yeah. what Seth Gross did. Um, yeah. what I believe Willie did it. Miklas did it. Yeah. Um, and, and Willie Miklas is, is like the most, the most justified transfer in the history of transfers to me. 
You sure. know, his dad was was terminally ill, and mm-hmm. and and if you know Willie at all, Willie's he's an interesting character. But you know, he did that for all the right reasons to be near his dad in the in the yeah. waning days, months of his life. And you know, mm-hmm. I don't think there's going to be one person, you know, Brian Smith, Kevin Dr- you know, no one's going to say boo about that one, right? I mean, probably yeah. literally the most justified transfer. I mean, I think I've ever I've ever seen, right? not a sign of the times like that. A lot of kids aren't doing that. Right. You know, a lot of kids, very unselfish thing on the part of Willie Miklas. Right. And it was a graduate transfer and it's, yeah, that one is just, but like some of the other ones are head scratchers to me. You know, I just can't figure out what some of these guys are thinking. The Teasdale guy, he's in the, the, the portal again. Right. You know, he's a young guy and a super talent and it's going to be his third D one. If he goes to a D one. Right. Not sure if he ever enrolled at one of them, but uh, yeah. Um, look, to me, like, there still has to be some semblance of this being about student athletes and about academics. So to me, if a kid is at an institution and he gets his degree, that's what you're supposed to do, right? So we yeah. have to reward that. We have yeah. to value that. So I'm really all right with the graduate transfer, man. If a kid like- gets a degree from somewhere, well, how can you stand in his way? Um, you know, if he wants to move on to somewhere else, yeah. I, I get, I get, and, and I've been at, at, at a college coach level too. So I get where you invest a couple of years in a kid, he's just getting better. And then all of a sudden he wants to transfer and it's completely wrestling related. I get where coaches might not release kids and I get where they would say, Hey, you know, we have rules in place for this and they would stand in the way. I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do every time, but I understand the, the, the motivation behind that but man if a kid's been there and he's been there for four years and he's got his degree I'm, I'm I, I think that's a game changer that that should end the conversation and the kid should be free to to to, to pursue what's next in his his life um in his academics and 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 go somewhere else and grow if that's what he chooses to do yeah I'm I'm with you on that one mm-hmm. I, yeah I'm, I'm I'm you know I'm an educator you're an educator so I don't think we're really gonna I think we're preaching the choir on that one, right? I mean, when yeah. it's a wrestling only decision, I struggle. Yeah, I, struggle. I, I just sure. just... other athletes transfer too, so it's not like it's it's cut and dried. But man, it just seems a lot more prevalent now with kids committing and then decommitting and going somewhere else, and kids getting in situations and and not really trying to develop the the stick-to-itiveness to to figure out how to get over to the next side rather than just leaving like what like it's uh it's 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 frustrating sometimes but you don't know the whole story either so you got to give them the benefit of the doubt but man it seems like it's happening a lot more yeah it seems like you're saying it's much more prevalent it's just Mm -hmm. it's just happening more man and we we made it easier for him to do it we made it easier for him to do it you can say sign of the times, you can say whatever you want, but it's just easier to do, man. And, uh, you know, and that would be something I remember I was going to transfer to Ohio University. I wanted to so bad because out of the mm-hmm. gate, my mom and dad, you know, I, I told you I was a walk-on. I was a one-time state placer. Mm-hmm. And after my – I think Andresi said a bunch of mean stuff to me. Said a bunch of mean <laughs> stuff to me all the time. But, like, my dad and brother said mean stuff to me all the time. Right. Uh, I had a bunch of high school coaches who said mean stuff to me all the time. When people say mean stuff to me now, I don't really get, I'm pretty unflappable with it. Right. I'm like, I, I, I know that. I know what that's like. I've experienced that. So mm-hmm. I remember here's Andresi told me one day, he's like, Miller, you're fat and you're weak as a kitten. Uh, and I was like, I like wanted to fist fight him. Right. And it yeah. was, we just would get into it a lot. You know what I mean? We would get into it a lot. And it was, you know, he, he wanted me to be better, right? Yeah. And, and you know, I, it would have changed, obviously, the trajectory of, my, trajectory of my life had I just transferred, right? So my mom and dad were like, hey, you go to Ohio University, you're on your own. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Go to Kent State, we'll help you out. We'll help you move in. Okay, we'll help you secure a loan. We'll help, we'll help you get you know, help pay for it, whatever, you know, but OU four hours away, good luck. And staying there and, and we, I went to Kent State cause it was cheaper and I, and I had to pay for, you know, to start out. 
I had to pay. Um, it was the right thing for me, man. Like, but you know, things happen in life. Bad things are going to happen. People are going to say mean things to you. Yeah. No, right? I mean, like the bigger things that we're trying to teach kids in, in the sport aren't necessarily, if you're going to be on a conference championship team, or if you're going to be a, a NCAA qualifier, those are all things that are important, but teaching kids how to, to deal with and overcome adversity, um, teaching kids how to be resilient. Like those are things that I think are, are long-term benefits from our sport that, that kids, if they don't confront that, if they don't, don't, don't try to figure it out is, is a wasted opportunity for them. Right. Yeah. Like, like you with your computer, right? Like rather than just, uh, you oh. know, throwing it away and, oh. and giving up and quitting on it, you know, um, I you melted, dude. I was like, <laughs> if there were a time, you know, they're always like, you know, social media is not real people. I shoot so much stuff. I put so yeah. much stuff out there that it can't not be real. What I'm putting out a lot of the time. My yeah. wife said that to somebody the other day. She's like, my husband puts so much stuff out on the internet. It's like, <laughs> I'm pretty transparent, right? Like, but if that 36 hours, if you could have, you would, people would be like, Zab is nuts. He's out of his mind. Yeah. I was, like I was inconsolable. That was literally like I, for four yeah. hours, I was like, ah, and I had to, I had to do two days on hiking the next day. <laughs> There's what I did two hike. I did two like, four mile hikes I was like out of my mind and it was it was so not me you know what I mean but like mm -hmm. and the other thing was the thing we did the the conversation it's yeah. never about me that was yeah. about me and I, I felt like I was like man it felt like one of the best things I ever did I gotta tell my a little, story little, a little, little cathartic right yeah and and it's, yeah it's, I was it's like all right, I don't get to tell my story and I got to you know and, uh, and you did a good job of facilitating the questions and Asked yeah. me things and I was like, "Oh man, this is great." He, Scott did a great job, and yeah, yeah, and it was not. I thought it was not there, and, and then I remember being at the Apple Store, you know, oh, taking pictures, and we're about to find out if it got saved, and then, boom, I put it right on Rockfin, and we were good to go. That's um, a happy but, ending. That's like the whole thing is like a, a an O. Henry short story or something with that that irony of how you were like asking questions for the last twenty years, and finally someone turns it around to you. And then boom, it's gone and it's in jeopardy, right? Yeah. Now, oh, Henry, oh, Henry, it wouldn't have ended happy, right? Uh, so someone could have put, it, put a little Disney twist on it at the end and, and Apple saved your life there, saved, yes. preserved it. Okay. I know we're, we're, you and I don't have a ton of time today, but. Um, no, that's good. Yeah. So, so we got a 60 game season. We got a 60 game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 60 game season, right? And uh -huh. I asked you, I said, we're going to have a season, right? Yeah. I want to roll that into the next thing. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have, you said, yeah, we're going to have it. We're going to have mm -hmm. it. The games. Yep. Are we going to have a high school season? Yes. We are. It might What's be like similar that? to baseball. It might be similar to baseball. It might be abbreviated. Um, okay. But I think we will. I think, um, yeah, I, I, there's people wrestling already, right? Um, and they're 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 definitely uh, ahead of the game, maybe more than I would like them to be. Uh, I think the less we wrestle in the fall, in the summer here, the more we'll wrestle in the winter. Um, but I think there's been some some movement towards reopening in a lot of places that are doing it successfully. So I think there are some models out there that have shown this is how you do it. Um, there's certainly people who aren't willing to comply with that, right? But I think as we get closer to it, we will continue to have um, success with learning. Now, we're not beating the virus by any stretch of the imagination, but we're learning how to live with it, right? Um, so I think there may be a lot more restrictions than we want, and it's not going to look like your typical season, but I think we will wrestle folk style on the mats this, this winter. Okay, so I was on the uh, a call before this. I was on a, a, a Zoom with uh, Terry Pack, Legends of Gold. Mm -hmm. yep. They are having uh, like a mega duel tournament mm -hmm. July, geez, oh, Pete's July uh, 17th to the 22nd. They're doing mm -hmm. elementary. They're doing uh, high school division. They're doing a girls division, okay? Yeah. The girls is only freestyle. The elementary and the high school is Greco. 
it, it's folk style, folk style freestyle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so he explained the process to me that what uh -huh. makes legends of gold safe and they're doing an O2 machine or an ozone machine. Yeah. They're doing four days of that after they, mm -hmm. after they have a camp, they shut down for four days. Mm -hmm. And effectively when you go there, you are quarantined to the 30 or 40 yeah. people that are in within your building. Mm -hmm. And he knocked on wood and you know, they have not had an illness yet yeah. that is con contact or traced to them. Mm -hmm. So, they're going to have over 50 teams there. Uh, Seabolt's going to be there. Uh, Simmons is taking a team from Simmons Academy uh, in Michigan, the, the Strangler. Yep. Uh, Cormier sent the team. Uh, he was telling – I was like, oh, my God. Uh, Dominguez is sending a team out of Nebraska. He was, I, I couldn't believe it, right? Yeah. So that – I think that that is largely going – we're going to see. We're going to get to see. I, I might be at this event. I might be. I might get to see firsthand what this may look like. Yeah. No. Right? I mean, we don't know. Like, I, I get it. Um, and, and, and people want to compete. And we obviously have the luxury of, of having competitions like that built into our schedule so our kids can afford to not wrestle as much maybe. It's, 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 and, 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 and I've really sold my guys on – man, what a great opportunity to not have to worry about competing right now because you get better when you don't have to compete, right? Like you invest in, in training and practice and you can get better when you don't have to compete. But I understand that, that, that people want to get on the mat. And I understand that there are people who are going to do that. Um, no question about it. Um, my concern is if, if, if there are documented cases or if it does blow up or if it does not go well, that uh, high school governing bodies are going to look at that and say, Hey, look, you know, we can't have wrestling because this happened at this event. You know what I mean? Or, or the national preps might say that, or, you know, some of the, the, the national federation of high schools might use that as evidence if it doesn't go well to say, look, wrestling's not safe. Um, so, you know, my preference personally, and as a coach would be, Hey, let's kind of shelf competitions until, just give ourselves more time and stay in smaller training groups and, 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 and focus on that. But that's not reality, right? Um, I can't control what everybody else does and people want to get on the mats and it's a free country and those areas aren't shut down. So they're going to find a way to do it. But again, my concern is, is if we're putting negative data out there um, from some of these things, uh, is that going to be a reason that governing bodies use when the, the high school season comes? Is that going to be a reason for University of Delaware to say, man, they hosted this event and there were 47 cases that came out of it. We're not going to allow the Beast of the East at our facility because of liability reasons. And, yeah. and, and other places do the same thing. So, so say Iron Man, right? I mean, yeah, I would love to, to have everybody kind of jump on ship and, and just give us more time to you know have every state be where we are in the northeast now with the the curve flattened and, and and have more people figure it out but i also completely understand that that's not 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 reality it's not going to happen um we're we're america right we are not built for collectivism we are built for individualism we are built for individualism and exceptionalism so that's why we can't do it like some of these other countries that are, are doing it because we're just not, that's not our mindset. And that's what makes us great too. So I get it. Yeah. Norway, Sweden, Finland, whenever people throw those comparisons out there and they're like, or Switzerland and I'm like, listen, stop. So yeah. Don't, no. don't compare us to them. I'm like, yeah. first off, the state of Ohio and Pennsylvania has more residents yeah. Than any of those, you can almost combine any two of those you want to. And Ohio yeah. or PA has more residents than you. Yeah. That's one of the 50 states. And it's just like, and the other thing is we, we're, we're tremendously diverse. America's yeah. tremendously diverse. Yeah. Northern Europe, not tremendously diverse. Not at all. Not socioeconomically no. tremendously diverse, diverse, not ethnically diverse. No. So, so those are factors. I don't care what you say. Yeah. Those yeah. are factors. They have none of those factors. 
those models are not going to work for us. Oh, there's, there's no. just, and I'm like, ah, when people do it, it's maddening, Scott. I'm like, that's where we are. That's that's the conundrum that we're in. Is is if you think you're going to get, them. we're not done. <laughs> there are there are people who you know, um, from Montana or South Dakota, and I've I've been across country, so so I get it. You know that that don't have a a kinship at all with someone from New York or or even like Cleveland. You know. Uh, they're like that's a different country to them so there's no oh, sense yeah. of yeah. This, this entire collective body we can come together and and and, and beat this virus um that's 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 not going to happen but at the same time you know my fears are that's going to cost us uh but i do think we will we will have a season um as 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 long as you know there's there's some expectations for it that it's not going to be what it's looked like um, forever. And it may never go back to the, the normal that we've known for the last 20 years. Um, it might be something totally different. And Hashtag gonna, new normal. Uh, don't say that, no. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's like, weird, man, I'm like. Constant, constant evolution, right? Just like we were talking about with the transfer portal. Yeah. It's not going back. They're not going to say, oh, we don't need a transfer portal anymore. So coaches are going to adapt, coaches are going to adjust. And they're going to know it's, it's going to be like some of these, these college coaches. I, if, if I'm a college coach right now at the NCAA D1, I'm way less likely to redshirt a guy, right? Because if I do, and that's a year that I don't get any production out of him if he decides to transfer, right? Yeah, um, yeah we don't so. know. And that's the other thing. Like, Terry I'm Pack giving him money. Great. I want him on the mat. Yeah. Terry Pack made a great point. He made a great point. He was like, uh, "What if you're a freshman? Mm -hmm. Why would you go in right now and start your clock? Everybody should be. If you have the ability to gray shirt next year, you should be gray shirting. Take yeah. under twelve hours because we don't know what's going to happen. They might not have a season, and they they start their clock and they burn a year, whether it's a red shirt year or not. Yeah. They could be burning a year next year. They're not. They're enrolled, and they got those five to get four. Yeah. There you go." Because the D1 has a clock. D1 and has the NCAA a clock. has shown that they're not going to give that back, right? I mean, like, they. No, they, they, no, they, no. They, they did. They're yeah. going to do the spring sports. Yeah. But, but if you're those guys, uh, if you're those guys, you're, you're, yeah, that's the thought in your mind right now. You're just we've like. Had a, we've had a huge uptick in postgraduate applications at Wyoming Seminary. And you're going to um, as, a res as, as a result of this, and we have had a huge uptick in kids wanting to reclassify when they come in. So like a kid who's like a 10th grader and they're like, and, and, and that's not going to help them with the National Federation of High Schools or anything like that. But a lot of them are just honest. They're like, hey, I miss like four months of school. Like, you know, like I'm, that, that's, it's, it's, it's a wrestling thing, but it's also like I've been sitting on, on a, a computer for school for four yeah. months. I'm going to, I'm going to reclass, you know, and and get some of that back, get some of that classroom time back. I want you to think about this, Scott. The Blair kids, the Sem kids, mm -hmm. right? You're paying 20000 a year if you're off. If you're, yeah. you're a boarding student, they're not going to let you board. You'll stay at home. But you're going to stay yeah. – you're going to pay 20-plus grand. If you're an Ivy Leaguer, you're paying yeah. eighty k a year to yeah. do online school? It's, it's, uh, That's nuts. Every, every institution is going to – struggle with it we've got people kind of finding out that how so so here's my flip on that too man living in the dorms is important like being a part of athletics teams is important being yeah. away from home and the like that is so much of the value of being a college or being at a boarding school and people are finding that out right because the this instruction they're going to be getting is going to be fairly similar, whether it's virtual or not. Um, but so much of that other stuff, you can't, you used to be able to say, well, you can't put a price tag on that. Well, well maybe now you can, <laughs> because people are saying, yeah. yeah, I'm not paying for that. You know, I'm not paying so my kid can sit in their bedroom and, 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 and go to this school or that school. Um, no, of course not. They're, they're the whole point of that experience is the experience and the education is a piece of that. So a lot of schools are going to learn that and the ones that are kind of stubborn and, and myopic in a lot of ways who think like kids are signing up for 
their courses or, you know, like their teaching expertise, it's going to be a tough, tough kind of eye-opening experience for some of them. Yeah, and, and, you know, like Kent State's the one I'm the closest to, right? You know, I've, I'm tied to it economically as far as rentals. Um, originally, their, their initial prospectus was – outlook was uh, 30% enrollment decline. Yeah. Okay. Akron cut half of their colleges. Mm -hmm. So now what do you think all those Akron kids are doing? They're 12 miles, 12 minutes apart. What do you think those Akron kids are doing? Let's go to Kent State. Go to Kent State. So Kent mm -hmm. State now only predicting a 6% decline. Yeah. 24%? That's yeah. a huge – that's a quarter, right? That's like one out of every four kids. You thought you weren't going to have. Now you're going to have. That's huge. And then that's, that's, that's like the institutions are facing that adversity, right? And the ones that like, like where there's that in incredible challenge is also where there's incredible opportunity, right? Yeah. Um, I have a parent on our team right now. They just made their 1 millionth face, face shield. Um, they're a pla they own a plastics company. Um, and they've just made their 1 millionth face shield, you know, and they've, they've kind of dug into this and said, Hey, we're going to adapt. We're going to go on the fly and they're helping. They're, they're, they're going to protect some people um, when we get back to it. And, and they've used this crisis as an opportunity to, to, to grow, you know? So those are the people that are going to come out on the better end of this for sure. Yeah. And it, you know, like guy Seiko, I went there and they made, they started making hand sanitizer. Yeah. I got some, I got some, I was on Amazon the other night, man. Crazy to think. Full supply of defense soap in my house now. He does not like – he's not a huge fan of being a hand sanitizer guy. He goes, it's not, it's not my market. I don't like it. Right. Mm -hmm. He did it to yeah. keep a cosmetic company in California so they could be labeled as essential and keep their doors open. Okay. That's yeah. why he did that. It does yeah. not sound like it that they are going to continue with that. It doesn't sound like that's yeah. going to be a reoccurring product that you're going to be able to continue to buy, which – Bums me out because I like to support them any way, shape, or form I can. And I like hand sanitizer, I like having it when I touch at the pump and do the numbers or whatever on a yeah, yeah, yeah. keypad. Yeah. Like it, it's a no brainer. It makes sense to me. But yeah. the whole thing to me is wild. Um, like you said, you got people, they just made their millionth face shield, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're helping people. They're helping people. He's helping people with hand sanitizer. He helped another yeah. business stay alive. He's helping you and I disinfect our hands after we touch a gas pump. Absolutely. Yeah. Still helping, right? And then, yeah. oh, their new facility. I haven't talked to you since I went there, have I? I've seen some video, though. It's nice. Oh, my gosh. We're going to be out your way in a couple of weeks. Maybe we'll pop in. Well, we'll, we'll I think we should go yeah. over and, and, yeah, I think that's something we need to do. I think yeah. I need to help. And then you guys can see, and they got a room there. Yeah. And, yeah, we're still trying to get to come over to camps and stuff, too, if you guys are – Mm -hmm. Still thinking about that a little bit. I don't know. You know, I know things change, and we've had uh, yeah. There's been some COVID spikes. If you haven't seen, uh, Texas yeah. had some areas return to phase one. Did you see that? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, large part of it, whether it's businesses opening, whether it's people going and demonstrating, protesting, First Amendment stuff, um, yeah. their American freedoms, both of them. So, yeah. um, we're gonna get what we're gonna get. Like you said. Yeah. You can't waste the time doing the men you can't waste the time doing the mental gymnastics to to pinpoint like, you know, one is okay and one no. isn't. Like if no. people are gonna be in close proximity to each other, they we're gonna see spikes. I'm, I'm, listen, and I'm not I'm not there. I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna do the <laughs> mental gymnastics. I'm not going to yeah, no. play devil's advocate. I'm I'm not gonna do that. It just it, That's it, your agenda. It, that's your agenda talking. That's not logic, right? Like yeah, if you're gonna not, be that guy. Forget not, it. Like, it's not my like, if, if people are around each other, there's going to be disease transmission. Sorry. I have like no that. hill to die on with either one of those <laughs> as to whether one is better, one is not. Because as you know, yeah. I, went to, I went to a rally, right? I went to a Black yeah. Lives Matter rally. Yeah. Um, I've went to a lot of businesses. Um, Christ, I've gone on state. vacation, right? I've traveled mm -hmm. state to state. So I'm not the guy to talk to about any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and sit here and say, don't do this. Don't do that. Um, when yeah. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. So yep. that's me, Scott, Scott Green. Um, any other season stuff or portal stuff you can think of we, that we didn't cover? 
No, I think we did a good job, and I think we're getting some momentum here. I'm looking forward to to continue with this type of stuff. Continue to, to have a back up the hill. It was a good a good to have a topic that we almost kind of stuck to. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's good to have that in theory, at least. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think that's the way this is going to be structured, right? Is a loose kind of tie. Little that, Nelly, little Willy uh, Nelly. And then you know we're just going to talk about whatever whatever we talk about. But yeah, yeah. whatever gets in our way. Right on. Whatever gets in our way. So um. Oh, NFL, they're going to have a season. I'm looking at a dog pound. Uh, I'm looking at a dog pound yard sign in my, uh, are we going to have an NFL season? I guess I'm just the eternal optimist today because I'm going to say yes. Um, and I actually believe that some municipalities are going to have fans in the seats. Oh, you know Cleveland is, dude. Uh, yeah, you know Buffalo is, too. Oh, Bills, no Bills Mafia. There are no. There are going to be Russian tables. Uh-huh. There are going to be beers. Yeah, those tables might be six feet apart in the parking lot, but it's it's uh it's it's gonna happen or the city's gonna shut down. Um, yes, I do think we're gonna have an NFL season. Okay. But again, I, I may be the eternal optimist, but that's how I'm gonna roll. Like that's that's not gonna change. I love it. <laughs> oh, when do you guys start back up after Labor Day? Uh, August thirty first. We're we're early. Um, early. We're early. Yeah. So. It's after Labor Day, right? Yeah, no, no, no. We're always early um, because are we're you, out. Guys early. Are? We're, we're out before Memorial Day, so so ah. we're early. Uh, but you know, um, our school is committed to bringing the kids back. They've announced it. We're going to have kids in our dorms um, in late August. So you know, I mean, obviously a lot can change between now and then, but that's that's what we're hoping and, and looking forward to. And all of our kids, we didn't lose one kid, right? Like um, in terms of the SEM wrestling, everyone they sent around a survey and they're like. Are you comfortable sending your kids back to the dorm with some measures in place? And boys, girls, everyone were like, we're in, we're in, we'll get there. We'll get there and we're in. So, Love it. yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. All right. Scott, All right, man. I got, you got business today. I got business today. I do indeed. Yeah. Always working on the weekend, like, like lover boy or something like that. I don't know. Uh, Oh my God, I'm thinking of this. You got a, you want a piece of my heart? Is that the, is that the song? Always, yeah. Everybody's working for the That's weekend. Fun. Is that it? Yeah. There you go, man. Yeah. Uh, they're probably that. playing some casino around the corner right now. You know, <laughs> like 50 years old, still wearing spandex with the teased out hair. By 60. <laughs> you can probably see them. Yeah. You can yeah, probably like, are, what are the stones? The stones are in their 70s. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So yeah. don't go play. Yeah, I know. I know. Keith yeah. Richards looks like death times ten. Yeah, he's. There's no more drugs to do. They got to wait. For <laughs> but, uh, the veins are all no more. Yeah. No more. All right, dude, get out there, get after it. All right, sounds well, good. We're good. We don't need to talk after camera. I'm gonna. I'll text you this when we're done, and we'll make it happen Perfect. next week. Keep pushing the rock awesome. up the hill, and we'll talk about when you're coming in July. All right. Sounds good, man. All right, I appreciate it. You're the man, Scott Green. Later. Yeah, see ya.